myself and Wesley Peens fishing up here in uh, Mozambique this afternoon. We're staying at uh, Paradise Beach Lodge near Pumeni and uh, sort of a midday time now. Seas calm and flat, not much going on. So we're getting some live bait from the shallows here and then we'll take the live bait out to the deep reefs or sandy reefs and see if we can get some nice fish this afternoon. We are on the Seacat 565. Yeah, we're looking for a bit of bait fish. Uh, Rudolph knows this area quite well. We're just north of Pemeni Estuary. And this time of the year, the, the bait fish come into the shallow areas. You get a carapau, which is our moz bunker, and a few slender scads. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and get a few live baits and head out to the deeper reefs and see if we can find those big pooper that are, that are renowned for being in these areas. The big 20, 25 kilo size fish. So that's the plan. Let's see if we can put that to the test. Coming from the shadows, from about I guess 10 kilometers straight up to sea, and now we're seeing a Zambia deep tickle the tree. We've got more live bait, we're ready to go. Oh, there it is. Oh, hey. That was about one minute. <laughs> one minute with a live bait, and we got an onion. Yeah. Well, there's a bus croc. Picking it up now, you're probably looking at between 18 and 20 kilos. What a beautiful fish. Let's get it back in the water. We're actually going to try to revive this. The gill damage is older, so I think we might get it right. We really thought that this fish was damaged by the gills, but it's, it's old gill damage. And it's amazing to see that the old, the, the old gills actually look dead. There's no redness in them at all. And uh, we thought this fish had had it, but it wasn't through our damage. And as you can see, it's kicking nice and strong. We re revived it, and this fish will be absolutely fine. And it really, really does feel good to get this fish back and kick it. We were a little bit worried about that fish and uh, when we let him go I think I pulled him a little bit too hard and his head popped up but then he went back towards Tim the underwater man and uh, he confirmed that he swam away like he said. Yeah. <laughs> well done Tim, well, yeah. well, well that just shows you, you know, sometimes you think you hurt damage just kill the fish die and that to me was actually amazing to see the whole side of almost the whole left hand side of the fish is gilled without all damage and it's still strong so you know, often we, we don't put fish back when they're bleeding in the gill, so maybe a lesson learned today. Yeah, now that, that, uh, that gill damage is maybe not the end of the world for the fish, but yes, always take care with your fish 100%, but if you do get a fish every now and again that's got gill damage, you think you don't release it, maybe put it back in the water, you never know, might survive. <laughs> the funny thing is, we saw, we saw that fish come up behind the boat and it looks like it was just following the, following the bait for a while, had a few turns on it and uh, we must have decided now that looks too good. <laughs> Big Kuta trying to keep my rainbow runner. So Rudolph is putting a downrigger quickly on his bait to pretty much present his bait right to the fish and let's see if that uh, big Kuta down there eats. Okay, well, this is a rainbow runner that ate the 
bite in the Kuda territory. And uh, nah, this fish is probably three and a half kilos. There was a big Kuda wanting this one for lunch. So sometimes we underestimate the size of the bait that these big crocodile, king mackerel, really eat. Get this one back in the water. See if he survives. <laughs>